you know, since they studied under a lot of teachers, and he would master each teacher's art, and then he would move on or whatever. When he said when he felt like he had, he didn't challenge the teachers, but he just felt like he had nothing more to learn from them, he would go on. And, and eventually he ended up with uh, Sasaku Takeda, who was the head of the lineage of the Daito Ryuaiki Jiu-Jitsu. And um, there are great stories about Takeda, little guy also, not, not even as thick as O-sensei, uh, devastating martial artist, and uh, not a particularly sweet spirit or something like that. And um, well, since it kind of got to that place where he was feeling it was time to move on, but Takeda was pretty much top of the line. And I think somewhere in here, and I'm, I'm guessing it was well established in his being before that. I'm making all this up. I never met the man. Um, that he was already in what I would call the lineage with the Aikikami. And uh, Patrick was reminding me, and, and Kenneth and I were talking, um, that, uh, you know, I always said that, that I didn't really consider Bob to be my teacher. I mean, he was sensei to me. He was someone who'd gone before. He was someone that showed me the way. I didn't really consider O sensei to be my teacher in that sense, that th what they had was the art. They showed me a doorway to the Aikikami. They showed me how they had gotten access to something more than themselves. So I always said, I, I always studied with the Aikikami. My sense was, I, wa I didn't want to be limited by who Bob was. I didn't want to be limited by who Osensei was. And as great as he was, he was a human being and there were these stories. And I certainly wouldn't want you to be limited by who I am or anybody else that you study with. Uh, you have a direct connection to that infinite, to the divine, to the whatever it is. And, and if you open up that doorway, then I think the Aikikami will in Nao Sensei, who we used to say, would come wake him up in the middle of the night, take him out in the garden and teach him Aikido, or teach him these moves. And he was going on, he would try these moves out there with these, in my mind now, imaginary ukes, but who knows what he was seeing or running into there. And, and, um, and his art started to change. And he started to get this, and then he started to move it towards something that was not exactly Dai to Ryu, Aiki Jiu Jitsu. And Takeda came by the dojo and you know, at one point, and again, me making up stories about what I think happened, and based on a lot of data points that we've heard in the past about it, comes by the dojo and goes, Mori, your Daitu Ryu Aiki Jiu Jitsu is getting weird. And that's where I'd say if Osensei had been a good, typical Japanese, uh, well-behaved, civilized, all those words that sort of sound like they should be good but end up being limitations on who you are if you misunderstand them. Had he been Japanese in that sense, he would have said, Hi, Sensei! And done exactly what he was told, the way Japanese people are trained to do because they like an orderly society unless you're one of the people in power and then that's another story, but for the rest of you, do what you're told. And Osensei instead said, Okay, Sensei, I won't call it Daitu Ryu Aiki Jiu Jitsu. And that's when he started to do what we would think of as Aiki Budo, which eventually became Aiki Do. And that ability to listen to what's going on for you and stay true to that, without it being, I don't want to hear what you've got to say, I know what I think, attitude. Uh, completely opposite of what, where he was at. He was a probably one of the best students in the world ever, as far as I can tell. Studied with everybody and, and always in the most respectful way. And uh, Takeda apparently was not really happy about that. But again, Osensei, when Takeda would come by after that, it was now an Aikibudo dojo, so it was no longer uh, Takeda's dojo. Osensei was always courteous to him. He was condescending to Osensei. Uh, Osensei was, would make him tea, would serve him, would treat him with respect, appreciated what he'd learned from him, never lost that. One of my sadnesses with when uh, Mr. Tohei split off from the Federation, he kind of left in a not so good way with Osensei. He sort of started to put Osensei down or something. I thought that was completely unnecessary. And the man was a great teacher and he had great stuff to show. He brought a lot to the art. It's a, a shame that we lost him. but. But maintaining that perfect balance where you're in line with who you are and yet you're open to and connecting with other people, I think that's what Osensei really taught us, that we could live and grow together that way rather than have it be an argument or a fight.